and welcome back. Battle of the Builds coming back with another build video. Be sure to check out battleofthebuild.com for all of your ESO build needs, especially if you're looking for a battleground build, you're looking for a no CP build, or maybe even a CP build or a PVE build. Be sure to check out battleofthebuild.com, your number one source for ESO build creation. With that said, I'm actually coming back with a PVE build for the Necromancer tank. I've actually been wanting to theorycraft a tank build for a while, and the Necromancer, in my opinion, is a really great addition to the PvE scene where people can play as a DPS role, as a support role, or as a tank role. In this video, we're going to be discussing Necromancer as a PvE tank. With that said, let's jump right into my build choice for the race I picked, Nord. Nord is a very good choice because it has access to both extra HP, extra survivability through physical and spell reduction, as well as extra ult gen. Which of course you're going to want on a PvE tank because you're going to want to be pushing out as much ultimates as you can, keeping either a high uptime on your offensive um on your offensive ultimates like Warhorn or for defensive ultimates or healing ultimates for that matter. With that said, I chose to go with the Atro Mundus. We have a lot of very useful magicka abilities and for that you're going to need a very high magicka recovery. As you can see right here, I'm running a very hefty magic recovery with really excellent stats as you can see right here. My attribute points are as follows, 25 into health, 14 into into Magicka, 25 into Stamina. Like I said, I am a Nord and then I am running the Mundus, the Atro, and we are discussing the Necromancer as a PvE tank. With that said, jumping right into the purpose of this build is to increase the survivability of our team while doing our best to maximize our team's damage. With that said, the Monster Helm of choice that I went with was, is a reinforced Lord Warden Helm. They're slotted with um, extra HP and of course I went reinforced for the extra mitigation. The Lord Warden Helm, the one piece gives you both spell and physical resistance and of course when you take damage you have a 50% chance to summon a shadow orb for 10 seconds that increases the physical resistance of you and your allies within 8 meters by an additional 3870. Of course this can happen every 10 seconds it's on a 10 second cooldown and of course it has a 50 percent chance to proc when you take damage as a tank of course as a tank it is your role and your purpose to take damage and of course this allows the increased survivability of our group by giving them some extra mitigation our second set of choice for the same reason i chose the kurios of the imperium the Imperium eggs adds extra health to you, as well as healing taken, and of course, that's exactly what you want as a tank. You want extra healing, along with extra healing received from either your healer or, of course, yourself. We do have a bit of healing that's going on with our kit, and of course, the very last part of that, it says when you take damage, again, that's our role as a tank, we're here to take damage. It says you have a 10% chance to grant you and your allies within 8 meters a damage shield that absorbs 14.5k damage for 6 seconds and this can happen every 15 seconds. It's a huge shield. Most people in PvE, especially for stamina builds that are typically a bit closer to the tank, this is really beneficial for them. The extra mitigation coupled with that extra damage shield can save your team in a pinch, especially when you take really big damage. That extra 15k into a damage shield is really going to come in handy. Of course, it increases your survivability, but of course, we don't want to be selfish as a tank. We actually want to do everything we can to help our team. Between Lord Warden and the Imperium set, these are two really good sets to secure and make sure that our team stays up and reduces the amount of damage that we take as well as the amount of damage that our team takes. The second set that I chose to use, we can actually maybe move down some of this magic of recovery and we can actually put it into our health recovery the reason being is because of the third set that i chose to use is 
the rings of the warlock the warlock set it got a big buff this patch from as you can see the tooltip there from 8,000 it got boosted to um, uh, just a little over 11,000 and of course they reduced the timer from one minute to 45 seconds and of course I'm running it on the back bar so I'm running three pieces on the front and then of course once we get below 33% we're able to switch back to our back bar it will proc and then we can go back to our front bar and be able to continue to use our magic abilities of course we could take some of this magic recovery if you feel that you are over sustaining and then just put that right into health or you can put into block reduction whatever it is that works for you for me i felt fairly comfortable playing this build as a as a magic tank and of course with a really hefty stamina pool you can see there almost 22k stamina with 19.5k stam and of course we've got almost 40k health with some really 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 good stats in terms of our recovery hp recovery is okay but of course that's why we rely on a healer to keep us topped off the other set that are the two piece set that i'm running is the ash and grip you can run whatever set i chose a set that gave me extra hp because i was trying to shoot for that 40k mark and so i went with two pieces of ashen with of course sturdy the the chest i went with reinforced and the other pieces can be either reinforced or you can go with extra sturdy pieces if you feel that you're not sustaining your stamina but i think you'll do just fine we're using um, health on all of the rings and of course magicka recovery on all of the rings if you feel that you're over sustaining with your magicka then you can use like i said either block reduction or stam reduction whatever it is that makes you feel more comfortable playing this build on the front bar we're running sword and shield defending and we're running a sturdy shield with hp on it and on our back bar we are running an infused ice staff so that we can block either with our magicka or we can block with our stamina and of course because of the really high region on our on our magicka when we flip to our back bar to block with our magicka we'll be able to regen that magicka really quick once we flip back to our our sword and shield where we're blocking with stamina in terms of the food i typically obviously want to go with a max stat food so that i gain the most out of my resources from my food for our first ability we're running pierce armor which does a little taunt for mobs that are in melee range it costs stamina it's the only ability that we're running that costs stamina as the rest of our abilities cost magicka it also does a minor fracture typically you'll only need to do this either for the boss as well be able to use inner rage for pulling mobs who are at range and of course this uses magicka and of course there is a synergy attached to it that we can use so that our allies can synergize this ability for a little bit of extra damage and of course this is what we'll use for taunting range mobs and of course we'll we be coupling that with beckoning armor so that when rain range mobs hit us it will pull them pull them and we won't need to actually slot a pull on this on this build as magic as necro is able to pull mobs every three seconds without actually having to do anything except take ranged damage our third ability here is called necrotic potency it says sap the lingering life from fresh corpses granting you six ultimate as well as an additional 16 uh, 66 health every one second for two seconds it says this ability scales off your, your max health we are running high health and of course while slotted your damage is reduced by three percent so again we have a little bit more mitigate mitigation we're sitting over capped actually and that's of course with the lord warden proc but even without the lord warden proc we're still sitting at the cap so we're gaining a little a little bit of extra mitigation on top of the 50 percent reduction and of course we will be we will be blocking so we'll be taking really minimal amounts of damage from the boss but of course so will our team because that's what we're trying to do with this particular build it also gives us a large amount of ult region so typically for when we're fighting uh, trash packs of mobs we're able to regen a large amount of ultimate so that we'll be able to basically have Warf warhorn ready or our other ultimate renewing animation for if members of our team die we're able to quickly quickly utilize our ultimate to bring them back to life and it gives us sustain our fourth ability here is called agony totem again another magic build, another magic ability which is why i favored using 
high magic or high magic of recovery because many of the abilities are expensive and of course we want to be able to ma maintain all of these abilities 100 percent during during the course of a fight because they're so beneficial to our team the totem grants you as well as anybody anybody standing within it um, minor protection which reduces the damage that we take by a percent of course it does a little fear and of course that fear cc's all the mobs as well as holding them in place for four seconds as well as having a synergy there called pure agony it does a little bit of damage it's a damage over time as well as applying minor vulnerability to them for the duration so that's five seconds of minor vul minor vulnerability that is applied to them of course and that is for five seconds so we want to be able to keep this up 100 percent of the time so that the mobs that we're fighting or the boss that we're fighting is taking extra damage and of course we as a team are taking less damage between lord warden between the imperium set as well as the agony totem we we are doing a lot for our team in the form of damage reduction our fifth ability on our front bar is called ghostly embrace it says summon three patches of skeletal claws from the ground in front of you snaring them by 50 percent for five seconds inflicting minor maim for five seconds as well as immobilizing them for four seconds this is a really good mob this is a really good ability once those range mobs have been pulled in by beckoning armor we can then turn around and root them in place slow them as well as reducing the amount of damage that we take for the next five seconds again like i said We've got a lot of magic abilities that are fairly expensive. In my opinion, that 2K is going to come in handy. On our back bar, like I said, we're running an infused ice staff with the reduced physical trait for reducing the uh, basically the, the boss's resistance by an additional 2100. And of course, we're coupling that with blockade on the back bar. Of course, it will immobilize enemies, but that's not what we're running it for. We're primarily running it so that we can have large uptimes on the back bar glyph. Our next ability on our back bar is called the Spirit Guardian. It does a little bit of healing either to you or to an ally who needs some, H some HP, but the primary reason for this ability is while active, it lasts for 16 seconds and it says there, while active, 10% of the damage taken to you is transferred to the spirit and of course it creates a corpse on death so this is extra damage mitigation for you as a tank it's going to come in really handy which why which is why i feel comfortable you can even probably push this hp a little further down and be able to maximize more of your um either stamina or magicka for utilizing your abilities the third ability on our back bar is unnerving boneyard it uh, has a range of 20 meter, 28 meters and a radius of six meters it does frost damage as a damage ability over time but the primary reason that we're using it is to basically apply both major breach as well as major fracture for the duration of this ability which is 10 seconds and of course it also has a synergy attached to it that does damage and the damage that the synergy does it heals you as a tank so this is really good for debuff debuffing large amounts of mobs at once and of course it has a nice a nice duration of 10 seconds our fourth ability on our back bar is called mortal coil this is an excellent ability for helping you maintain your stamina as primarily ways that we're going to regen our stamina either when we drop block and we have a little bit of match of stam region as well as from heavy attacks and of course from heavy armor where we have access to the constitution passive that will grant us an additional 540 magic and stamina every four seconds and of course using the mortal coil gives grants us an extra 2844 over the course of 12 seconds that's the equivalent of an additional 470 stamina return while blocking and of course when you're on your back bar blocking with your magicka it says this ability also increases your healing done by an additional three percent but the primary reason that we're using it is for a little bit of hp return as you can see there it returns 10,000, basically 10,500 over the course of 12 seconds to you and all allies between you and the corpse as well as of course the extra stamina return that we can utilize while blocking and our last ability on our back bar is called 
beckoning armor. It's our source of major buff in terms of our physical and spell resistance. And it says, while active, it says enemies that strike you with range attacks will be pulled toward you once every three seconds. And of course, this ability, when the duration runs out or any time below 10 seconds, you can recast the ability and it will drop a corpse on the ground. So we have one corpse here and another corpse here that we have access to. And of course, our last ability and our ultimate is called Renewing Animation. It says, bring your allies back from the brink of death, resurrecting, resurrecting up to three allies at a target location. It says you restore 5,300 magicka and stamina for each ally you resurrect. It's very, very expensive at 335 ultimate, but when you're trying to clear content and people go down and you're having a hard time resurrecting, the tank can step in and resurrect them in a pinch. And of course, it has a range of 28 meters and a radius of 12 meters. This is an excellent ability for both PvP as well as PvE, whether you're playing a tank necromancer or if you're playing a support style necromancer. Like I said before, be sure to check out battleofthebuild.com or check me out on Twitch at infamous with two S's and I'll be back with another build video for the Stam Necromancer. With that, thank you for watching, take care, and have a great day.